Hello, the first thing I would say for this video is if you haven't seen the electrolysis video previous to this, I would go and take a look at it. But if you have, we can carry on. What we're going to do is look at the electrolysis of aqueous solutions. Now, we've talked about that before, but just let's recap. What's an aqueous solution? Well, if we have something dissolved in water, that's what we have, an aqueous solution. One example we can look at, and we've visited, visited this before, is sodium chloride. So if we dissolve some sodium chloride in water, we call that an aqueous solution. Now, when the sodium chloride dissolves in water, what happens is it breaks up into ions. And in fact, we'll end up with four different kinds of ions. We'll have sodium ions, chloride ions, but from water molecules, these will be broken down into hydrogen ions, H+, and also hydroxide ions, OH- ions. So we're going to have four different ions and two of those are positive. So there's our four ions. Two of them are positive, sodium and hydrogen, and two of them are negative, chloride and hydroxide. Now if we carry out electrolysis, which of the ions are going to be attracted to the electrodes? Now just remember that we have a positive and a negative electrode and the positive is connected to the positive side of our cell and the negative to the negative side. And we have two positive ions. Now, which one is going to be attracted to the negative electrode and which of the negative ions are going to be attracted to the positive electrodes? Well, we need to look at a rule, and this is a rule you need to know and remember. At the anode, and you'll remember that the anode is the positive electrode on the left-hand side of our diagram there. At the anode, we're going to get oxygen produced unless the solution contains what we call halide ions and that's going to produce a halogen. So let's just add a little note to our diagram. We're going to get the halogen produced, but what is it exactly we mean by a halogen? Well, you remember from a few videos back, the halogens are found in group seven of the periodic table. And when they produce ions, they produce what's called halide ions. So the halogens are in group seven, and the halide ions are ions from these halogens. So, for example, Cl- is a halide ion, and it would produce the halogen chlorine. So that would be Cl2. So the halide ion is Cl-, and the halogen is Cl2. That's just one example from group seven. So what we can say in our diagram, just summarizing that little paragraph, is we get the halogen or we get oxygen. We get the halogen or oxygen. If the halogen is not present, we're going to get oxygen, and that comes from the hydroxide ions in the water. Okay, now at the cathode, that's the negative electrode, we're going to get hydrogen gas. That's if the metal in the solution is more reactive than hydrogen. So if we have a metal in the solution and it's more reactive than hydrogen, we're going to get hydrogen gas. Now, how do we know if it's more reactive? Well, we've got our reactivity series here. You can see hydrogen there in red. Everything above hydrogen is more reactive. Carbon is in there, it's not a metal, but we use that for predictions in other reactions. But everything above hydrogen is more reactive. So we can write a shortened version of our rule here. We could, we're gonna get hydrogen gas if the metal in the solution is more reactive than hydrogen. So we'll get hydrogen gas if the metal in the solution is more reactive than hydrogen. Everything above hydrogen is gonna be more reactive. Remember to ignore the carbon because carbon is not a metal but everything above is more reactive. So if we have a metal that's more reactive in the solution, we will get hydrogen gas formed at the negative electrode at the cathode. So what does that mean for our sodium chloride solution? Well, what would we get at each of the electrodes? Let's figure it out. We can start off with the anode first. So we've got chloride ions and hydroxide ions that could possibly be attracted, but we have our halide ions, so we're gonna get the halogen. The halogen is in group seven, and that produces halide ions, and the halide is Cl minus. So we have Cl minus, so we're going to get chlorine gas produced at the positive electrode. What about at the negative electrode? Well, we need to see whether we, if the metal is more reactive than hydrogen, and if we look at our reactivity series on the left hand side there, we can see that the sodium is way up near the top and that is much more reactive than our hydrogen. So that means we're gonna get not the metal, but we're gonna get hydrogen gas. So at the negative electrode, at the cathode, we get hydrogen gas. 
in other words h2 okay so these would be shown as bubbles being formed at each of the electrodes chlorine gas at the positive electrode and hydrogen gas at the negative electrode and these are the products from the electrolysis of aqueous sodium chloride now that all sounds a little bit tricky but if we practice a couple I think it will get easier now we've got a diagram on the left hand side on the right hand side there sorry on the right hand side we can make a quick note about what we get at each electrode so we get the halogen or oxygen gas at the positive electrode otherwise known as the anode and at the cathode which is the negative electrode we would get hydrogen and that is if the metal in the solution is more reactive than hydrogen unfortunately you will have to memorize that that won't be given to you but just for the sake of this we'll have it in the corner so it can help us get to grips with what we're looking at next so the first example we could look at is that of copper sulfate solution so if we look at what ions there are going to be in copper sulfate we'll see that it will be copper ions Cu2 plus sulfate ions which are CSO4 2 minus and because it's in solution it's in water we're going to have hydrogen ions and hydroxide ions which is OH minus okay so we have our two positive ions which are the hydrogen and the copper and our two negative ions which are the SO4 and the OH minus so if we deal deal with one at a time let's deal with the anode that's the positive electrode and that's going to attract the negative ions we don't have any halides i.e no chloride fluoride bromide anything like that so we're not going to get the halogen we're going to get oxygen gas based on our rule we're going to get oxygen gas so we can write oxygen there and remember the halides are ions from group seven okay what about the cathode the negative electrode well for the negative electrode we're either going to get hydrogen or copper but the rule is that if the metal is more reactive and in, in this case it's not it's copper copper is less reactive than hydrogen so in that case we're actually going to get the copper metal so in this case we'll get copper metal at the negative electrode and if we actually did this experiment it's quite a fun one to do you'll see copper on the negative electrode and bubbles of oxygen gas coming off at the positive electrode okay so that's one more example I've got two more to go so let's do the next one the next one is a solution of copper chloride so if you want to pause and have a go at this one you can but if not let's do it together so we've got copper ions Cu2 plus chloride ions Cl minus and H plus and OH minus from the water and there's our ions highlighted as positive and negative let's do the anode first so that's the positive electrode and remember we have to see if we've got halide ions and we have we've got Cl minus halide ions so we're going to get chloride ions making chlorine gas at the positive electrode for the cathode we've got hydrogen if the metal is more reactive but again we haven't got a more reactive metal we got copper like last time so we're going to get copper metal on the cathode okay so one final example you should be able to have a go at this yourself by now hopefully so pause here and give it a go if not let's write down the ions and then give it a go so the ions are sodium which is Na plus SO4 2 minus H plus and OH minus so we can highlight the positive and the negative so this sulfate and hydroxide are negative and the sodium and hydrogen are positive so let's do the anode first the rule is we get the halogen or oxygen there is no halogen as you can see we've got sulfate and hydroxide so the rule is we're going to get oxygen gas produced and that remember comes from the hydroxide ions at the cathode the rule is hydrogen is produced if the metal is more reactive sodium is way up there way more reactive so therefore we're going to get hydrogen produced at the negative electrode okay and you'd see that in the form of bubbles at each electrode the positive electrode would have oxygen and the negative electrode would have hydrogen okay so hopefully that made some sort of sense unfortunately you do need to remember the rules but once you've had a go at a couple like we just have hopefully that will make sense and you'll be able to do that if it comes up in a paper so thank you for watching and i'll see you soon